Hey everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at the first story from chapter 34 from the Road to Latin textbook called De Factis Fortibus. Now before we dive in, whenever you want to um, get a little more help on the story or get some more resources, feel free to check out my website Nova Latin. You can find the story there, you can find um, grammar notes, vocab help, practice problems, just a bunch of things to kind of help bring the story to life and hopefully help you as you work your way through the textbook. Now before we dive too far into the video, like I always tell you in these, um, these uh, videos and, and explanations, the first thing you want to do when you come to a new chapter is make sure you learn all the new vocab words. So it's very difficult to read and translate if you don't know what the words mean. So that's kind of step one. So either make your own list, find one, or feel, uh, feel free to take mine. If you go to Nova Latin, you can find um, a quiz that I have and just use it to practice, right? Study it up. Um, make sure you feel really confident before you do anything else. The other thing that you want to do is make sure you look at the grammar. And again, that's where my website might help you. You can find um, all my grammar notes. You can find the ones from the Road to Latin textbook, plus ones that I've added, um, videos, practice problems, magistrulas, just things that kind of help my students on their way through. Um, when you learn the grammar by at least pre-reading it and le learning what it is in advance, then when it comes time to help, uh, uh, rather to translate the story, at least you know what the grammar is so you can see it in the context. That's the great thing about Road to Latin and these reading method textbooks. Um, they take the grammar and they work it into the story so that you can see it, you can practice it, and as you read the story, you really are working on the grammar. So that's hard to do if you don't know what the grammar is. Um, there's different stories strategies for this, but I at least recommend looking at the grammar. Um, getting a sense of what it is, even if you're not perfect. That way, as you work your way through the story, you know what to look for. You can see it in context and really practice it. A couple of suggestions before we dive too far in. Read the story aloud, right? If you can find a classmate, read it to them, work on your speaking, your pronunciation, have them read it back to you. That way you can work on your listening skills. You never want to shut those off. Um, it'll really help you understand the language if you're listening to it um, and reading it instead of just looking at it on a page, right? So bring it to life. Never shut those parts of your brain off. Um, you never know, it might just help you uh, to really unlock the language for you. The other thing that you want to do is you want to try the read and reread method. So when you work your way through the translation, you want to read it once. As you're reading, write down any problem areas you have, whether it's vocab, grammar, anything you don't understand, write it down in a list. Then when you finish the story, take a look at your list and work on all the things you didn't know. So if it's vocab, look up those words. If it's grammar, go back to the chapter and make sure that you look up what these different pieces of, of grammar are so that you can read the story again. And on that second time or a third, fourth time, you keep doing the same practice. And by the, you know, whatever second, third, as many times as it takes you, you should be able to read the story without it needing any help at all, right? With, you don't have to look up any of the words. You don't have to look up any of the grammar. You're able to read and understand it. Um, that's how you know you're in a really good place and you're ready to move on. Okay, so before we get into the translation, though, I mentioned the grammar. I want to give you a quick overview of the grammar here, and I can't give you, um, you know, the most detailed one just in the timing of this video. So I'm going to point you back to my textbook. You can find all my grammar notes on Nova Latin um, videos, different things that would help you. But to give you a, a quick refresher of what we're doing. This chapter is on third declension adjectives, okay? So you want to remember that in Latin, just like with nouns, we put adjectives into groups that we call declensions, okay? It's the same word. I know it gets a little confusing, but it just means group. Now, the first ones we saw were the what we call first and second declension adjectives, right? These are the ones that end in us, a, um, in the masculine, feminine, and neuter. And we call them first and second declension adjectives because they use the same endings as first and second declension nouns. So it's kind of easier to, to understand these and use them. Okay. Now, when you use an adjective, you want to remember that it matches the noun in case, number, and gender. We call this noun adjective agreement. So it doesn't have to be the same declension, meaning you can use a first and second declension adjective to describe a third declension noun. It's totally fine. And if that feels a little overwhelming, I know we're using a lot of sort of grammar jargon here. Don't get overwhelmed by it. Just practice it. You've been doing this for a bunch of chapters now. Um, hopefully it makes some sense. You're just using adjectives. You match them up to the noun. So if my noun is masculine, I use the masculine form of the adjective. If it's feminine, I use the feminine form, right? That's what the case number and gender is all about. So if you want a more detailed um, refresher on that, I would point you to a video I made on noun adjective agreement, right? You can find it on, on this YouTube channel. Um, just look in the short grammar lesson section, or if you're on chapter 34 um, of Nova Latin, you'll see it um, embedded in the grammar notes. But this goes into more detail. So for the sake of time, I'm going to move on. But you just want to make sure that you understand the idea of how we match adjectives to nouns as you work your way through this chapter. Now, this is a chart of what first and second declension adjectives look like, right? I mentioned the osa um, that's just the gender, right? So us is masculine, nominative, singular. 
ah is feminine and um is neuter. All these endings, though, should look really familiar. They are the same thing as our noun endings, right? So when you're uh, putting a first and second declension adjective with a first and second declension noun, which is what the book was doing um, very early on, they have the same ending, right? They match. That's pretty straightforward. Okay, but now what we want to do in this chapter is learn the other type of adjective, which is called the third declension adjective. Okay, now they're called third declension because they use endings that are similar to third declension nouns. Now you notice I said similar, not the same. They aren't the exact same thing. Okay, there's definitely a couple tweaks and differences that the textbook points out, and I point as uh, point out as well in my grammar notes. It's not the exact same thing, um, but it's close. So we call it third declension um, adjectives. Okay, a couple things that you'll notice. So there's there's different types of third declension adjectives in terms of the endings in the nominative singular. Okay, in general, the nominative singular endings are is is a for the masculine, feminine, neuter. Okay. But there are some adjectives that have three different endings. So there's a distinct ending for um, masculine, feminine, and neuter, right? So the adjective aker, for instance, comes to mind. Okay, you have aker, akris, akre, right? Those are three different endings for um, uh, the masculine, feminine, and neuter. Some have two endings. That's kind of the standard uh, third declension adjective. That's the is, is, a. So if you notice in is, is, a, is and is are the exact same thing. That's when masculine and feminine are the same. These are what we call third declension adjectives with two endings, okay? And some only have one ending, okay? So in other words, it's spelled the same adjectives like audax, for instance. It's spelled the same no matter what the gender is. So that sounds complicated. It's really not that bad. If you're looking at a vocab list, you'll notice kind of the endings here and what they're using, but you practice it a little bit I'll point it out um, in this chapter, right? So the chapter uh, story for, for um, chapter 34 does a really good job of using those three different types of um, third declension adjectives. We'll point it out as we go, but that's really what you're after here in this chapter, just unpacking um, the different uses, okay? Or the different types of adjectives rather. And this is what it looks like on a chart. So if I were looking at third declension adjectives in general, this is the endings, uh, these are the endings they use rather, right? So this is an example of what we would say, um, or what we call the third declension adjectives with two endings, right? It's is a and you notice that the masculine and feminine are the same thing that's kind of a, a typical one and if you go down the line looking at the endings you'll see that they're pretty close to third declension right you notice accusative singular is em right that's something we've seen in the plural you're saying uh ace eum ibus ace ibus right that's almost the exact same thing um as third declension nouns, just with eum, i-u-m, in the genitive plural. So it looks very similar, but it's not quite the same thing. This is what I mentioned before. You want to just take a look um, at the notes in this chapter, and it'll show you the, the minor differences to help you memorize this chart if you want. Um, I'm not so big on, on memorizing the chart. I like to just use it if we need it. But still, it'll help you kind of unpack what this is all about. Now, if you want more detail, I know that was a fast kind of overview of what this chapter is about. You can see um, a lot more in a different video I made, right, on declension for adjectives. You can find it. I walk you through it in more detail. Um, again, it's embedded in chapter 34 if you're using my textbook for the notes, or you can find it on my YouTube channel. But one way or another, you can find this information too, and it's always there for you. So at this point in the video, we're going to move on and start looking at the translation. If there's anything you're not sure on, grammar, vocab, pause the video, go back, um, work your way through it, and then continue the video after you've read it through a few times doing, like I said, the read and reread method, speaking it. You want to do that before you continue on. But what we're going to do now is take a look at the translation. And as long as your translation was pretty close to mine, you can use it as sort of a, a guideline or a checkpoint to see if you're on the right track and ready to move on. Okay? So the story goes like this. You have fabulae de Romae principis erant liberis Romanis maxime acceptae. Okay, so the fabulae, the stories about Rome, right, De Romae, and it's about the, or sorry, about the beginnings of Rome, the Principi, uh, Principis Romae, right? So stories about the beginnings of Rome were two Roman children or four Roman children, um, Maxime Acceptae, right? So they were very much or greatly, you might say, um, uh, welcomed or, 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 or pleasing rather, not welcome. Uh, they were very pleasing to Roman children. Okay. So they love these stories about the beginnings of, of Rome, right? The early beginnings of Rome. Then you have facta clara acrium virorum et feminarum ab eis laudabantur. So facta clara are famous deeds. So you're saying the famous deeds of acrium virorum. So there's our first third declension adjective, right? Acer. And you notice here that it's genitive plural, which is why it's got that I-U-M ending. It's a third declension adjective. I-U-M is the genitive plural. It's describing weororum and feminarum, right? So the famous deeds of fierce, um, you might say, fierce men and women, 
um, laud abantor, they were praised ab ace by them, meaning by the Roman, um, the Roman children. So you notice here something interesting about third declension adjectives. I told you a lot of the times, right? The masculine and feminine are the exact same thing. So you'll notice here, um, and, and that's all the way through. They're always the, the same thing. Sometimes the, the nominative singular is slightly different, but you'll notice here, acrium, I-U-M, is describing weororum, which is masculine, and feminarum, which is feminine. Okay, it's still spelled acrium. So in this sentence, technically, you are implying acrium for both of them. They're fierce men and fierce women. It would be spelled the exact same way. Okay, so it's saying these famous deeds were praised by the children. Then you have Faustulus, acer pastor, a pueris, aca acris uxor eus, a puelis laudabator. So here we have another example. So they're using acer, right? Um, which I mentioned is one of those third declension adjectives that has three different endings. So technically in the nominative singular, which you're going to see here, it's spelled differently for masculine, feminine, and neuter. So this is saying Faustulus, right? An acer pastor of, of, of fierce or kind of spirited, or I guess fierce is kind of good, um, shepherd, right? He's a pastor. Notice how it's spelled acer. That's the masculine nominative singular ending. So he, Faustulus, laudabator, he was praised a pueris by the boys, meaning by the Roman boys. They just mentioned the Roman children. They're saying the boys praised um, Faustulus, or literally here it's saying Faustulus, the fierce shepherd, was praised by the boys. Aca, acris uxor eos, his fierce wife, right? So the Acris Uxor, um, literally the fierce wife of him or his fierce wife, Laudabator, was praised by the girls, Apuelis. Now notice how Acris here is also non singular, but since it's feminine, now we've changed the spelling a little bit to Acris with an I-S instead of Acer. That's an example of where we have different spelling for masculine and feminine um, adjectives. Okay. Then you have ingenium pastorum era acre, nam multa era pericula. So the ingenium, now ingenium here, um, it, it, it kind of means a, a few different things. It can mean like your character, your disposition, your nature. I think nature kind of works the best here. Um, it's talking about sort of, like I said, the character of the person. So it's saying the ingenium, the nature of, of the, the shepherds, pastorum, um, era acre was fierce, right? These shepherds are, are all kind of fierce people, bold people, right? Now notice how acre there is describing ingenium. Here we have another nominative singular form of acre, right? In this case, acre, but it's neuter. So now it's spelled A-C-R-E. So in these two lines, you're seeing nominative masculine singular, acre, nominative feminine singular, acris, and nominative neuter singular, acre. So it's giving you that sort of um, visual or contextual use of the, the different um, genders with third declension adjectives, okay? So you're saying the character of the of the shepherds was fierce, uh, was fierce for multa erat pericula. There were multa pericula, right? Many dangers, right? You're out there uh, with the flock; it's dangerous. So they're they're tough people, right? Acre people. Then you have facta um, or facta pastoris acris et uxoris acris sunt nota. Okay, so the deeds of the shepherd or of the fierce shepherd rather pastoris acris, right? Um, the deeds of the fierce shepherd and uxoris acris, his fierce wife sunt nota. They are well known, right? They're noted. They're well known. And again, here acris is the genitive singular now. So we went nominative singular. Now we're going genitive singular, and you got to see masculine and feminine. Right? It's spelled the same way. I mean, it would be acris either way. It really doesn't matter. Okay? So then we go on to the next part of the first paragraph. And you have famam ingeni acris eorum etiam hodie audimus. So you're saying audimus, we, um, are we here, and you have etiam hodie, so even today. And when the, the authors in this textbook say today, they mean like modern times. So it's saying even today we hear, we listen to, or we hear about, I guess, the famam, the fame, right? of the ingeni acris eorum, of their, right, eorum, fierce uh, nature ingeni, right, uh, literally of the fierce nature of them, right, or of their fierce disposition or nature. So it's saying that their, their deeds are so famous, right, that we even hear about it today, right, we hear about how fierce and tough they are. Then you, and, and again, notice how you have um, acris there is the, the gender singular again, right? We just saw it in the previous line with pastoris, which is masculine, and uxoris, which is feminine. Now we're seeing it with ingeni, um, which again is neuter, right? So it's just showing you the different, uh, the different genders of it. Same adjective. Then you have ab acri pastore gemini inventi sunt et domum portati sunt. Okay, so the gemini, the twins, 
um, in Wentison, they were found, it's perfect tense, passive voice, uh, they were found by the fierce shepherd, ab acri pastore, right? So by the fierce shepherd, and they were carried home, portati sunt dom, right? So, and they were carried home. So they're found by him. And here's the ablative form of acri. They're found by um, Faustulus, and they're brought home. Okay. And again, this is referencing the famous story of Romulus and Remus and their, their upbringing, um, you know, that we, we've talked about before, but feel free to look this up just to get the context, you know, what this is referencing. Then you have ab uxore acri pueri educati sunt. So the, the, um, the boys, the pueri, educati sunt, they were reared or brought up, you might say, um, ab uxore acri, bar the fierce wife, right? Meaning aca. So they're raised by, by his wife. So Faustus and his wife raise Romulus and Remus. Then you have cum pastoribus gemini multos sanos habita vera. So um, the boys, or, or sorry, the twins rather, the Gemini, the twins, they lived, habita vera, just perfect tense, they lived with the shepherds, cum pastoribus, for many years. Multos anos is accusative, so when you have time in the accusative, you're showing a duration of time, so for many years is the translation here. So it says they lived um, with the shepherds, it doesn't just mean um, Faustus and Aka. It means like the group of shepherds, right? That community of shepherds um, uh, around, you know, Rome, basically. Uh, that's who they live with, right? So, so Romulus and Remus start their lives as shepherds. Then you have ei poste a duques delecti sunt quod adolescentes erant magni ingeni. So ei they, right? Meaning the boys, right? So they afterward, we might say uh, poste afterward they um, delecti sunt. They were elected duques leaders. You might say they were elected as leaders leaders or selected leaders. Okay. So all the other shepherds make them the leaders because they are these famous boys, right? And they show leadership really, er, uh, um, uh, really early on. So they were elected leaders because quote, adolescentes, the young men, meaning Romulus and Remus, um, they were magni and Guinea. They were of great ability, meaning they had this great, um, ability or nature or disposition, right? Magni and Guinea. Okay, then you have mox multa de ingenio acri romuli leg uh, romuli regus legimus. So you're saying uh, soon, or the book is saying rather soon. Uh, legamus, we will read um, the the multa many things, right? So multa here is is just the neuter um, accusative, right? So many things we're implying that substantive uh, about the ingenio acri about the fierce uh, nature of King Romulus, Romuli Regis, right, is uh, is genitive singular. So soon we're going to read all about um, that fierce nature of King Romulus, which is true. We have a, a couple, couple stories coming up um, where we're going to learn about Romulus uh, and his brother and kind of that story, okay? Then you move on to the next paragraph, and you have uh, Liberi Romani, uh, Fabulas de Factis Fortium Virorum et Feminarum Libenter Audieban. So Roman children, the Liberi Romani, they um, gladly, libenter, happily or gladly, heard, audiebon, right? Imperfect tense, but you could just translate as heard. They heard fabula stories, de factis fortium. So about the deeds, de factis, right? There's your deeds part. The deeds of strong men and women, right? Fortium virorum et feminarum. Now here in this paragraph, we've switched to a, a, a new type of third declension adjective. These are the ones with two endings, right? The is, is, a. So if you look up in the dictionary, fortis is listed as fortis, is, a, or sometimes just fortis, comma, a, meaning the, the letter e, that's because the masculine and feminine are the exact same thing. So again here, uh, fortium, right, um, is describing virorum and feminarum, right, masculine and feminine words. It's just genitive plural, so the IUM works, okay? So they hear these deeds, they happily uh, hear stories about these strong uh, men and women, okay? Then you have Saipe Patres Ace, Fabulas de Romulo Forti, um, Narabant. So often fathers or their fathers, you might say, uh, Narabant told Fabulas, told stories to them. Ace is, is date, if you remember, you, you tell something to someone, right? So the fathers tell stories to them about Romulo Forti, about um, brave or strong Romulus. So there again, you have a third declension adjective describing Romulus. It's just the ablative um, singular form. Then you have Romulus etiam, uh, etiam puer erat fortis. So Romulus, uh, Romulus, even as a boy, right? Etiam puer means something like that, like even a boy, even as a boy. Um, erat fortis, he was brave, okay? So he was a brave, he was a, a brave little boy, even at a young age is kind of the idea, okay? Then you have agros pastorum um, custodiebat et saipe cum latronibus pugnaba, okay? 
so Custodiebat, he was guarding or he was protecting or, or guarding um, the agros pastorum, the fields of the shepherds. And often, Saipe, Pugnabat, he was fighting cum latronibus with robbers. So even at a really young age, Romulus is protecting the flock, protecting the fields and fighting off people who are trying to steal their sheep. OK, pretty straightforward. Then you have Vires Pueri Fortis Erat Magna. So Vires here is a, a feminine noun. Remember when you put it in the plural, it looks plural. You really translate it singularly as strength, right? It's got this plural aspect to it, but it just means strength. So Vires Pueri Fortis means the strength of the strong or of the braver or strong boy. Erat Magna was great, right? So the strength of this little, this little brave boy um, was great. It's talking about how Romulus is really tough. Okay. Then you have multi fabulae de rea silvia quoque narabantor. Okay, so we're, we're shifting gears here a little bit. So we just talked about Romulus, which we're going to do Romulus and Remus. But it says um, multi fabulae, many stories also narabantor, also were told or were being told de rea silvia, right, about rea silvia. So remember, rea silvia is the mother of Romulus and Remus. Then you have ea erat femina fortis. She was a femina fortis. She was a brave woman. And again, here we have fortis, right? Brave describing femina, woman. And it's uh, nominative singular. So you notice that, uh, again, if you were to say brave man, it would spell, be spelled the exact same way, right? I as fortis. Okay. So this is setting up a couple different um, uh, stories that are going to come up in the future chapters. We're going to be talking about Romulus and Remus, right? We've seen a lot of that story um, so far referenced and Rea Silvia. It's just telling you the different stories that Roman boys and girls like to hear. And now we continue on and you have Fili Iparvi, right? So it's continuing the story of what you're going to be seeing. You have Fili Iparvi, a matre forti diligenter custodie bantor. Okay. So the Fili Iparvi are small children. Okay. Or, or small sons rather. So it's saying, uh, it's talking about Rhea Silvia. It's saying her small sons, right? Who were Romulus and Remus, uh, custodie bantor. They were guarded diligenter, diligently by the matre forti, by the brave mother. So it's talking about how Rhea Silvia really protected Romulus and Remus, right? Her Fili Par, okay? Malus rex tamen, eus rapuit et dolor matris fortis erat magnus. So an evil king, right? A malus rex, a bad or evil king, however, or nevertheless, right? Um, seized them, rapuit eus, right? Seized Romulus and Remus. So seized them, and the grief, the dolor of the matris fortis, right? Of the brave mother was great, erat magnus, right? So she was really sad when, when the king um, steals, steals the children, right? This is Romulus and Remus's uh, great uncle, or no, rather uncle great uncle, right? Their grandfather's uh, brother. So their great uncle, right? Um, and this is the famous story of Numitor that we've talked about before, right? So she was really sad when they when they seized Romulus and Remus. Then you have Liberi Parvi, Fabulum de Lupa Maxime Amaba. So uh, Liberi Parvi, right? Small children, it's talking about small Roman children, right? So not Romulus and Remus anymore, but small Roman children is the uh, implication here. They Maxime Amaba, they greatly loved the Fabulum de Lupa, the story about the she-wolf. Okay, so again, this is continuing the story about Romulus and Remus. Um, they're thrown in the Tiber River, and then the she-wolf saves them. You have animal forte, suo oro, uh, ore geminos parvos aripa fluminis traxi. So the, the braver or, or tough kind of brave animal, animal forte, and again, notice it's uh, forte, nominative singular, is, is, a. That's the E ending for the neuter, right? So <clears throat> the brave animal. Um, with her own mouth, right, sua ore, with her own mouth, dragged, troxit, right, dragged the geminos parvos, the, the small twins, from the ripa fluminis, from the bank of the river, meaning the bank of the Tiber River, right, so she dragged them out with her mouth and saved Romulus and Remus. Then you have cotidie in latibulo animalis fortis pueri curabantor. So every day, cotidie, um, the pueri, the boys, were taken care of. Curabantor is just imperfect passive, right? They were taken care of in latibulo, um, in the, the den, I guess you'd say, right? Uh, the den of the animalis fortis, of the brave animal. So every day they're taken care of and they're raised in the she-wolf's den, right? She raises them um, as their own. Then you have said tandem uh, faustulus pueros in venit et ab animali forti eos capet. So, but finally, or at last, Faustulus, remember the shepherd, um, in Wainet Pueros, he found the boys and Capet Eos and took them um, from the brave animal, Ab Animali Forti, right, from the brave animal. So he saves the, saves the boys, right, saves Romulus and Remus. So this paragraph, the one we just did the past couple slides, is showing you that second type of third declension adjective, the one that has isis a endings, right, masculine and feminine are the same thing, but the adjective Fortis is really what fits the bill there. So we've seen... Um, 
the adjective uh, with one ending, right? Aker. Now we've seen the one with two endings, Fortis. You're going to see the one with three endings, which is going to be Audax um, in the rest of the story. So again, you're getting a lot of repetitive sentences um, using the same adjective. Everyone is brave. Everyone, um, you know, is going to be bold in the next paragraph. And, uh, you know, everyone was fierce kind of in the first one. That's on purpose because it's showing you all the different forms of these types of adjectives. So hopefully it's been making some sense so far. And then we end with this, right? You have um, facta, right? So the deeds again. So facta audacium virorum et feminarum famam romai auxerum. So the deeds of bold men and women. So again, here we have that genitive plural and the IUM ending. You're seeing it's, it's all the same for uh, third declension adjectives, right? But audax is going to be this last type of uh, third declension adjective. So the, the deeds of brave men and of brave women, right? Auxerant faman. It, uh, auxerant means it increased, right? It's perfect tense. It increased the famam romai, the fame of Rome, right? So their deeds kind of strengthen up the whole city. Then you have audax rex, Romulus, filias sabinorum rap. Audax factum Romuli est notum. So Audax rakes, the bold king, right, or a bold king, Romulus, when he becomes king, he's an Audax rakes, right? So the bold king, Romulus, Rapuit filias sabinorum, he, he grabbed or he stole, right? He took Rapuit, the filias sabinorum, the daughters of the Sabines, okay? So this is a story we're going to be talking about, um, I believe, in the next chapter, right? Um, the famous story about the rape of the Sabine women, um, famous myth involving uh, King Romulus and kind of how Rome gets its population started. So he he took the Sabine women, and then you have the audax factum, the bold deed Romuli of Romulus s notum is well known, uh, is well known rather. So that bold deed of taking the Sabine women is a really famous story, and we're going to get that in the next chapter. Then you have era quoque virgo audax tarpea de qua fabula narrator. So there was also right era quoque there was also. Um, a weirgo audax, a bold maiden, right? Tarpea, a bold young woman named Tarpea, about whom, de qua, right? About whom a story narrator is told, right? So about whom a story is told. And she's going to play a role in the next chapter too. So in chapter 35, you're going to learn about the Sabine women and you're going to learn about um, Tarpea, this famous uh, young woman. Okay. Magna est fama regis audacis et virginis audacis. So great is the fame, right? Or the fame is great. Or you might even just translate the way I did the first time, right? Great is the fame of the bold king, regis audacis, and the bold um, young girl, right? Virginis audacis. Okay. So their fame is very, uh, very great, right? Their reputation. Then you uh, end with this line, you have brevi tempore fabulas notas de rege audaci et de virgine audaci legemos. So in a short time, brevi tempore, legemos, we will read the fabulas notas, the, the well-known stories about the rege audaci, right? The bold king and about the um, virgine audaci, about the bold um, maiden or young woman. Okay, so Again, this chapter isn't really diving into anything we haven't seen. It's just more giving a, a repetitive story um, to let you see the different types of adjectives and set up what we're going to read um, as we move through the rest of the, uh, well, not only this chapter, um, but the rest of the next few chapters, okay? So starting in the, uh, the second chapter, uh, the second story, rather, of chapter 34, you're going to start to see more about, again, Romulus and Remus, the Sabine women, um, Tarpeia. All these stories are going to come, um, kind of come to fruition here. OK, if you have any questions at all on anything that we did, the translation, the story, anything at all, the grammar, feel free to put it in the comments below. I'm more than happy to help you. But otherwise, keep at it, keep practicing. And the more you read it, the easier it should get. And you want to hit a point, like I said, we're able to read this without looking up any vocab or grammar. That's always the sign that you're ready to move on and you can feel really comfortable with it. Good luck.